Cheryl Connolly, and I am the Global Consumer Trends and Futuring Manager for Ford Motor Company, and it is my honor to welcome you to the sixth annual Further with Ford Trend Conference. Now, I see a lot of people have your phones out. Thank you. I see a lot of you have your friends out, phones out, so you already know the deal. Here, we encourage you to engage with your phones. We would love for you to uh, tweet or uh, we have at Ford Trends uh, to keep in line. It's not going to be like your traditional industry event. You will hear us talk about things that are much broader than Ford Motor Company or even the industry. We're going to look at social, technological, economic, environmental, and political arenas. My job as a corporate futurist is to help facilitate organiz organizations and their discussions in terms of long-term planning and strategy, and we do that by exploring trends. So that's what we'll talk about today. Um, but this one is unique, because when we talk about trends, we're usually trying to identify change. What are the changes on the horizon? And relatively speaking, that's fairly easy. Spotting change is not that difficult. But understanding why change is taking place in the first, first of all, is a much harder challenge. And for that reason, we have set up the theme for this conference to explore what are the underlying drivers of change? In a word, why? Why is this happening? For those of you who are parents, you probably know that when your kids are toddlers, they ask a seemingly unending stream of why questions. Why is the sky blue? Why do I have to go to bed so early? Why do I have to eat broccoli? Why do I have to go to school? A whole list of things. And while sometimes this could be a little bit trying on their parents' patience, scientists tell us that this is really important. Asking those why questions creates the building blocks for those toddlers how they see the world around them. And sadly, as we get older, we stop asking why questions. This might be because we already think we know it all, or we're embarrassed to admit when we don't know something. But when you think about how dramatically the world is changing right now, isn't it time to revisit the question of why? Don't we need a better grasp of understanding why things are moving in the direction that they are? So for that, we have an extraordinary lineup of speakers our inspirational leaders from within Ford Motor Company and some of the most remarkable and provocative thinkers outside the company. And first of all, our first speaker is going to be my longtime friend, Dan Airely. Now, Dan, I know from the TED uh, conferences, and I have met a whole bunch of interesting people, but by far he stands out as the most fascinating individual that I've ever run into. He is going to help us understand why we think the way we think, why we do the things we do. So, Dan, will you come on up? So, um, a guy comes to his mother and he says, Mother, after 40 years, I finally decided to get married. And the mother is so happy and she said, I would love to meet your future wife. He said, how about Friday night for dinner? The mother said, great. And then, and then the guy said, you know, Mother, in the last four years, I dated three other women. Why don't I bring all of them for dinner and let's see if you can guess which is the one I'm going to marry. The mother is excited, the guy is excited, Friday, Friday night dinner, he shows up with four women and the mother starts talking to them. She talks to the first, the second, the third, the fourth, she goes back and forth, back and forth for an hour. At the end of the hour she points to one of them and says, this is the one, this is the one you're going to marry. And the guy is just shocked. He said, mother, how well do you know me? How well do you understand me? He said, I love all of these women. I respect all of them. I care a lot about all of them. I'm friends with all of them. But this is indeed the one, this is the one I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. He said, what gave it away? What was the, the skill, the attribute, the characteristic that made it clear to you that this is the one? So the mother looks at him and she says, it's the only one I hate. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to talk a little bit about emotions and how emotions get in the way. Um, so there's lots of things in life that we kind of know what's the right thing to do, but we don't behave in the appropriate way. And these are called self-control problems. Something where something is good in principle, but not right now. So some really great insight about why we do the things that we do. I want to take a minute now and shift gears. Um, Ford Motor Company is a 100-year-old company, and we're doing really well. Why change? Why mix things up? Why look at mobility through a new lens? 
not just in terms of making cars, trucks, utility vehicles, but what about mobility services? Why now? And I can't think of a better person to answer that question, of course, other than Mark Fields, our president and CEO of Ford Motor Company. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ford President and CEO, Mark Fields. So I loved your, your, your talk. I now, you know, we're going to change your title from a corporate futurist uh, to uh, Cheryl to um, uh, manager advanced hindsight. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So I promise I won't present and text at the same time. But I also want to uh, welcome viewers who are watching our conversation via live stream on Yahoo Finance. So welcome to everybody online. And it really is a very exciting time in the auto industry, in particular, a very exciting time at Ford. And if you were with us uh, last year, or you've at least been following our story, you've heard us talk about how we're expanding our business to be both an auto and a mobility company. And as, as Cheryl kind of posited, you know, why are we doing this? Well, of course, the world is changing and it's changing very quickly, and it's spinning faster than we've ever seen before. If you think of megacities, or those metropolitan areas with uh, at least 10 million uh, people in them, uh, they're growing, and they're on the rise even more. Uh, the global middle class is going, is expected to double by 2030. And of course, air quality concerns are growing, uh, causing significant health concerns. And consumer attitudes as well, their attitudes and their priorities regarding vehicles and transportation is also changing very rapidly. So think about this, a couple of factoids. Here in the United States, there are 30 new vehicles sold every single minute. But in that same time span, so just one minute, there are seven million miles driven 125,000 taxis and Ubers on the road, 60,000 shared rides, 450,000 bytes of data from a connected vehicle, and 350,000 apps are downloaded. And the bottom line is that the world has moved from just owning vehicles to owning them and sharing them. And this is causing us to think very differently as a company. In fact, this is what's driving us to rethink our entire business model. Because as these numbers show, it's, it's no longer just about how many vehicles that we can sell. It's also about what services that we can provide as well. And that's why we introduced Ford Smart Mobility to offer a wide range of transportation solutions for folks. And Ford Smart Mobility, very simply, is our plan to lead in vehicle connectivity, in mobility, autonomous vehicle, the customer experience, and data and analytics. Now, you may have seen some of the news that we made uh, on Friday detailing our plans to partner with global cities, starting with San Francisco, to really help solve some of the congestion issues and help people move more easily through the city, both today and in the future. And the first part of this plan is to create a shuttle service that can supplement and expand the reach of traditional mass transit. And as part of this, we're acquiring Chariot, which is a San Francisco-based crowdsourced shuttle service and we have plans to expand it to at least five additional markets in the next 18 months. Now, we're also partnering with Motivate and offering the new Ford Go Bike to essentially expand bike sharing across the San Francisco Bay Area. And we plan to grow from 700 bikes in operation today to 7,000 bikes by the end of 2018. And we've also established a dedicated team inside our company, inside Ford, called City Solutions. And their job is to work with cities worldwide to plan and to solve their transportation issues today and tomorrow. Now, 
Another key area of focus that we've been making some news and big news is in autonomous vehicles, big topic in the industry these days. And we believe that the next decade is gonna be defined by the automation of the automobile. In fact, we see autonomous vehicles as having as significant an impact on society as Ford's moving assembly line did more than 100 years ago. And that's why we recently announced our intent to have a high volume, fully autonomous vehicle in commercial operation by 2021 in a ride hailing or a ride sharing service. And that means there'll be no steering wheel, there's not gonna be a gas pedal, there's not gonna be brake, pe uh, brake pedals at all. And essentially, a driver is not gonna be required. And we're dedicated to putting autonomous vehicles on the road for millions of people not just those who can afford luxury cars. And to get there, we've invested in, or we're collaborating with, a number of startups to enhance our, entire, our autonomous vehicles development. And we're expanding as well our Silicon Valley operations, essentially creating a campus in Palo Alto and doubling the size of our team uh, there by the end of next year. Now, Henry Ford, was a very important disruptor in his day. And he drove a radical change at the start of the 20th century. A change that helped people all over the world follow their dreams and build better lives through the freedom of transportation. And we see this moment right here and right now in the very same light. And we're continuing to do what Ford has done for the past 100 years plus. We're making people's lives better by changing the way the world moves, making transportation accessible to millions of folks, and providing new mobility solutions for people for decades to come. And so with that, I'm gonna pause for a moment because what we'd like to do now is I'd like to invite my friend Henry upstage uh, to join me on stage. Many of you are familiar with Henry. Uh, he's uh, the co-founder, the CEO, and editor-in-chief of Business uh, Insider. And you may recognize him from his uh, many appearances on CNBC or CNN or, you know, name the media outlet. He's been on a lot of them. And Henry writes about uh, business, he writes about finance, and he writes about what's happening on the economy and how many industries today are being disrupted by technology and consumer trends, all topics that are related to the transformation that's underway here at Ford. So we thought we'd invite Henry to come up and, and deep dive a little bit some of these topics and explore the question, why mobility, why now? 